Hello everyone, we are back and today we are going to continue with the topic of energy metabolism, diet and weight control and I want to pick up from the last slide that we discussed about a week ago before we had two classes, one class was the preparation for the exam, we had a Q&A and then we have the exam on the on the 26th so today we are back to the normal continuation of the course and I want to pick up from the point that we actually stopped and it was about determinants of energy expenditure and we listed four of them we mentioned basal metabolic rate or BMR and the thermic effect of food or TEF also known as diet induced thermogenesis also abbreviated as DIT, adaptive thermogenesis, and physical activity. So we're going to go through each one of this, but today I want to focus on basal metabolic rate because this is a very important concept and there is a lot of important application to this idea of energy metabolism and also weight control. So I want to go more in depth into basal metabolic rate. So to begin with, <clears throat> I think it's important that we uh, uh, define what basal metabolic rate is. And it refers to the myriad of biochemical processes required to sustain life. So essentially, it's every uh, metabolic activity you have in your body that is required to maintain your cells, your heart beating, your liver functioning, your stomach, your intestine, your, your gut, your brain, everything, your lungs. So everything that is involved with your minimum amount of energy to sustain life. So it's some people also uh, call, actually prefer to call resting metabolic rate because it's very difficult to establish what is really the bare minimum or only necessary to sustain what a living cell would require. So I think for practical conditions, it's more often referred to resting metabolic rate because under resting conditions, we can pretty much characterize what it is. And then we can establish and assign uh, a certain amount of energy or a number of calories that refers to how much is necessary for the basic or resting conditions. So, and how do we determine it? It's determined in the rested and relaxed state at thermal neutrality, in other words, you cannot have a temperature that is, uh, promotes uh, that is uh, that promotes sweating or any increasing or any necess uh, 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 any activity in your in your body to regulate body temperature, either because it's too hot or too cold. So it has to be in what we call thermal neutrality. It's a comfortable uh, temperature that maintains, uh, that doesn't require any alteration in metabolism, either to uh, uh, eliminate heat or to produce heat in terms of if you are in a hot and humid environment or if you're, you're in a cold environment. So you want to be in a thermal neutrality condition, no demand for energy either way to regulate your body temperature. And also we do this, this measurement is taken after 8 to 12 hours of fasting. So you have to be awake, you have to be rested, relaxed, and in a fasted condition, obviously, because when you, if you are not fasted, you all, you, there is a certain amount of energy that is spent just for the processing of food. So you have to be under fasted conditions. We are going to discuss this more when we talk about thermic effect of feeding. But for resting metabolic rate, we want to do this when you are fasted, 8 to 12 hours. And... Basal or resting metabolic rate accounts for 60 to 75 percent of total daily energy expenditure. In other words, the majority in people, not in athletes, but in most people, average basal metabolic rate or resting metabolic rate accounts for the majority of the total daily energy expenditure that anyone uh, has. So when we abbreviate total daily energy expenditure as TDEE. So how do we, so if you are under resting conditions, 
what are the how where is this energy coming from so what are the what is the contribution of different organs and tissues to this resting metabolic rate so i have a table here and i really want to go in details or explore the details of this table because it gives us some very important information that is applicable to day-to-day -day life so let's first describe well what the table is so what we have here on the left is tissue or organ weight in kilograms and we have m for male f for female so and then we have here the different organs so we have liver brain heart kidneys muscle adipose tissue and then we have other tissues that includes bone skin intestines glands and etc so now we have here the oops sorry we have the tissue weight in kilograms so let's say liver for instance is 1.8 kilograms approximately on average in men and approximately 1.4 kilograms in women now if we look here going towards the right we have here tissue organ weight in as percentage of total body weight again for men and women and we also have then organ metabolic rate in kilocalories per kilogram per day in other words how many calories uh, each of these organs uh, uh, spends per day in terms of kilogram of tissue and the last column here to the right we have metabolic rate as percentage of total so of the total amount of energy that you spend or your total energy uh, resting metabolic rate what is the percentage that each of these organs actually contribute again for males and females so again let's start with liver so liver for men is approximately 1.8 kilograms and women 1.4 and in terms of percentage of body weight so liver is 2.57 almost 2.6 uh, percent of body weight for men and 2.41 percent for women now look at the metabolic rate in kilocalories per kilogram per day so liver has a metabolic rate of approximately 200 kilocalories per day and this is uh, <clears throat> just four a kilogram of liver so this which means that liver has a pretty high metabolic activity it's not it's an organ that is constantly doing something so 200 kilocalories per kilogram per day and it's for the total metabolic rate is approximately 21 percent for male for males and females so 21 percent of the basal metabolic rate comes from liver alone so liver is an organ that has a very high metabolic activity throughout the day we have no control over this it works by itself but it has an important contribution to metabolic rate now look at the brain brain is 1.4 kilograms in men 1.2 in women it's approximately two percent body weight for both men and women women is slightly higher 2.07 but it's very close now look at the metabolic rate of the brain one kilogram of brain per day spends 240 kilocalories so it's a, again even more active if you if you were to the metabolic activity of the brain is even higher than the one of the of the liver and it's another it contributes another 20 to 21 percent of energy expenditure of metabolic or basal metabolic rate for men and women respectively again another very important contribution here then we have the heart 0 0.33 0 0.24 kilograms so for men and women so you see that it's, a, it's not even 0.5 percent of body weight which is 0.47 for for men 0.41 for women so but look at the metabolic rate 440 kilocalories per kilogram per day and this is obviously because the heart never stops beating it may go faster or slower but it's always beating so there is an intrinsic energy expenditure related to the heart that is because it, it cannot afford to stop heart even when you are in the most relaxed condition you could be you still have at least a minimum a number of beats per minute has to be sustained so for that reason metabolic rate of the heart is pretty high so it's almost double that of the brain and liver 
together, or uh, brain and liver independently. So it's almost double of that, or more than double for the liver compared to the liver, but almost double compared to the brain. And it contributes approximately nine and eight percent of resting metabolic rate in men and women respectively. Another organ that is very important is kidneys. 0.31 kilograms and 0.275 kilograms. So it's a tiny, relatively small organ compared to your body weight. It's 0.4 and 0.47, 4447 for men and women. So again, not even 0.5% of body weight. We'll look again the metabolic rate. So similar to what the heart does, the kidney doesn't contract, but the kidney has to filter blood continuously. So it's a pretty important function of the kidney. And for that reason, metabolic rate, and there is a lot of transport that occurs in, in the kidney. And for that reason, there is a high rate of transport that is done, or a high number of transport uh, uh, that takes place in the, in the kidney. It is done by energy consuming transporters. So they are, they are, they contribute a significant amount to basal metabolic rate. So in, for men, male and females, it's 8 and 9% respectively. So now look at this. If we were to compare only for, add only for liver, brain, heart, and kidneys that I, I highlighted in red here. If we add them up, it's approximately, we say it's 41, <clears throat> 50, 50, almost 60% of your resting metabolic rate, of our resting metabolic rate, comes from four organs liver, brain, heart, and kidneys. And again, we have no control of, over these organs in terms of how much they're going to work. You could make the case that the heart, you can accelerate the heart if you engage in intense exercise or if you engage in any kind of physical activity, you can increase the activity of the heart. But you don't control how much of it. Specifically, the heart has its own rhythm and its way, own way of controlling heart rate. But again, you have four organs here that together account for almost 60% of basal metabolic rate. And then we have here muscle, which is the organ that people usually focus because it's related to exercise. Because this one we can control. We say, well, your muscles, if you have a big muscle mass, you, can, you have more uh, a higher metabolic rate. But look here, this is an important point that I want to make sure that you, you understand here. So muscle for men is approximately 28 kilograms and 17 kilograms for women. It's approximately 40% of body weight for men and 20 or let's say 30%, close to 30% of body weight in women. So it's a big tissue. If you compare to the other organs, it's by far the one that has the biggest or the occupies the biggest proportion of your body weight. It's a large organ. But now look at the metabolic rate under resting conditions. One kilogram of muscle per day spends only 13 calories. So even though it's a large organ, or we usually think of muscle as a very important organ in terms of energy expenditure, it is when you exercise because you can mobilize large muscle groups you can do it continuously you can prolong the, the exercise and for that reason you can really increase substantially the number of calories that you spend with muscle contractions but under resting conditions when you're not doing any exercise your muscles have a very low metabolic rate because if you could let's say you look at your biceps or you look at your quadriceps if you're sitting like I am now, or even you watching this video, what you're going to see is that the muscles, they are pretty much relaxed. There is very little energy demand. You can make muscle work hard, but you have to engage in exercise. You have to get up and move. And the harder you exercise, obviously, the higher will be the metabolic rate. But that increase in energy expenditure is only during the time that you are exercising. As soon as you stop exercising, metabolic rate in muscle goes down significantly. And again, just to put this in perspective, one kilogram per day is only 13 calories. Look at compared to liver, brain, 
heart, kidneys, test organs, when they are under resting conditions, they have a much, much higher metabolic rate than what you have for your muscle. You can make your muscle work hard and really get up to a much higher metabolic rate compared to these other organs, but you have to be under exercising conditions. So under resting conditions, skeletal muscle contributes approximately 22% of resting metabolic rate in men and 16% in women. So the reason why it's, it's, it goes up to 22 and 16 in men and women under resting condition is, is not because of the metabolic rate of the muscle per unit of per kilogram, but because you have such a large compartment. Muscle is 40% of your body weight in men and 30% in women. Then you add up when you multiply this low metabolic rate under resting conditions by a high number, which is the proportion of your body that is made up by muscle. That's why you get a 22% metabolic uh, contribution of 22% to resting metabolic rate in men and 16% in women. But under resting conditions, it's not a very highly metabolically active tissue. Why I also want to bring this up is because if you, there is this idea and in the exercise, in the, in the field of exercise, especially if you if you go to a gym and you listen to those people who talk about exercise, personal trainers, what they usually say, oh, we are going to increase your muscle mass. Because if we increase your muscle mass, when you're resting, you're going to have a significant increase in your metabolic rate because muscles spend more energy. Well, we have to be careful when you say that because when you are resting, metabolic rate of a muscle is slow. Now, let's say you, you, you work out hard, you engage in a resistance training program that is high intensity, that means that you are going to use heavy weights and you're going to try to increase muscle mass by uh, uh, exercising on a regular basis. So you're going to say, oh, I'm going to have hypertrophy and then my muscles are going to be bigger and I'm going to increase my energy expenditure under resting conditions. Well, it turns out that if you gain one kilogram of muscle, which is not, <laughs> it's not easy to do, one kilogram of muscle is about 2.2 pounds. So for you to gain two, one kilogram of muscles with exercise, with resistance training, takes time. And it's, it's quite a bit of, of an achievement. You're going to increase your resting metabolic rate by approximately 13 calories. So it's basically irrelevant in terms of increasing your resting metabolic rate. You can make the case that, well, I have more muscles, then I'm going to be able to exercise more. So if that's the case, then I understand that gaining more muscle will make a big difference in your overall energy expenditure. But not so much under resting conditions. It would be more so when you're really exercising. And I, and I understand and I agree that if you have more muscles, you can exercise harder. You can exercise for a longer period of time and that will add up a lot more calories. But it's not what you're doing under resting conditions, which means you're not doing any uh, effort. So for that reason, one kilogram of muscle would be 13 calories additional per day. Well, let's say you're so good that you gain three kilograms of muscle in a in a period of a year. So under resting conditions, it would increase approximately 39 calories, 40 calories in a day. So it's really very, very low, the amount of the number of calories that you really increase in terms of increasing mu muscle mass under resting conditions. Again, I want to make sure that it, it's clear here. Under resting conditions, it means very little. But if you have more muscle and you are able to exercise more, tolerate a higher intensity of exercise and do more prolonged activity, then obviously exercise will really boost the energy expenditure that you have in a day. But under resting conditions, it means very little because muscle, skeletal muscle, can under, under resting, resting conditions when it's in, the, in its relaxed state, the energy demand is very low. So we, we really uh, uh, have to be careful when we put forward this idea that if, you, if you're going to engage in heavy resistance exercise and you're going to have hypertrophy or increase in muscle mass, say that you, it's, we have to be careful when you said we're going to have a, a significant increase in resting metabolic rates. That's not really 
true to say. It's true to say that it under it will allow you to do more exercise. When I say more, is higher intensity, and maybe tolerate for a longer period of time, and that will add up to your total daily energy expenditure, not necessarily to your resting metabolic rate. Okay, and then we have adipose tissue, which is also a large compartment. In men, is approximately 15 kilograms. Women, approximately 19 kilograms. And it's 21% body weight of men and 32% on average for women. But metabolic rate of adipose tissue is even less than muscle. So adipose tissue has a very low metabolic rate. It's 4.5 kilocalories per kilogram per day. And it adds up because of its size. It adds up to 4% and 6% of basal metabolic rate for men and women respectively. And then we have combination of other organs and tissues such as bone, skin, intestines, glands. Together they make up 23.2 kilograms, 18.9 for men and women, and then 33% of body weight and 32% of body weight in women. And then it's, it has a metabolic rate of approximately 12 kilocalories per kilogram per day. So it's very similar to muscle. Uh, the difference is that, and obviously they also, it's a pretty relative combination of all these organs and tissues, the remaining organs and tissues. It goes up to, I mean, it accounts for 33, 32, 33% of body weight. And then that's why, even though it has a relatively low metabolic rate, it also gives you adds up another 19 to 24% to total resting metabolic rate in terms of energy expenditure. So again, this is to give you an idea of when we talk about resting metabolic rate, the main organs, main determining organs of your metabolic rate are these four here, liver, brain, heart, and kidneys. Muscle is just because it's a, such a big compartment that it ends up contributing a relatively high amount of energy or significant, it would say in this case 22 and 16 percent. But these four organs here that we have no control over are the ones that really account for almost 60 percent of your resting metabolic rate. And muscle again becomes important when it comes to exercise, but not really under resting metabolic rate. So when we talk also, there's another concept that people use a lot is the lean body mass. And when we talk about lean body mass, we're including all these different organs except fat. So liver, brain, heart, kids, and kidneys, muscle, bone, skin, intestines, and glands, they are all part of your lean body mass. The only thing that we take out of this is adipose tissue. So when we measure lean body mass, or we say oh, we are going to increase or reduce your lean body mass, you're talking about all these compartments, all these organs together, except the adipose tissue. So it's relatively, uh, it's important to, to separate the different compartments and look at how much each of them contributes to your resting metabolic rate. And again, before next time, before you say that exercise, resistance exercise increases your resting metabolic rate because of increasing muscle mass, think again and look, go back to this table and then you have a much better understanding or idea of what we are talking about because one kilogram of muscle gives you approximately only 13 calories. You cannot do much to your brain, you cannot do much to your liver, you cannot alter your heart or your kidneys because these organs there you have no control over and they are the ones that really determine your metabolic rate, resting metabolic rate. Muscle, you do have control, but they contribute more energy expenditure when you're exercising because you force the muscle to become, to spend energy as opposed to when it's under resting conditions that it has a very low metabolic rate. I hope this is clear and we can, we're gonna, it's gonna, come back to in other ways as we progress in this in, with the f next few lectures. So for now, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye now.